store your essential oils. Okay, let's talk about this real quick for a minute. They're an investment. They're kind of pricey little beggars. You need to uh, invest in them, and, and they last a long time. There's not, you know, it's not like you have to have a complete new set of them every, you know, every every you know two months or something like that. They don't outdate like that. They last a very very long time. The the ones that have the lowest shelf life, the shortest shelf life, I guess I should say, are the citrus oils. And you're looking at about, you know, 10, 12 months on citrus oil. Now, does that mean that if I have a gallon of, of orange oil, because that's what I use to clean my house with at home, and it's a year old, that I have to throw it away? No. It means that it may take me, instead of three or four drops to clean the counter, I might need seven or eight drops or something like that. It doesn't mean that it's totally not effective. It just means that it may not be as potent but I have never found this to be horribly true. I use um, orange oil all the time when I... Sorry about that. I dropped the phone. I'm sorry. I dropped the phone. Um, I, uh, I I clean my house with, with orange oil all the time, and I spray it on cloths and wipe windows and, and do all that kind of stuff, and uh, I've not ever found even by the time I get to the bottom of the gallon jar that I bought it in is it not even as aromatic or, or as potent okay but they are the ones that have the shorter shelf life some essential oils actually improve with age sandalwood and I am a sandalwood junkie I love it uh, improves with with uh, with with time and so it just gets better and better and better and better the number one thing that you want to do for your essential oils is keep them uh, keep them out of the light. Keep that top on. Keep them out of the light. Uh, keep them. We sell them in the amber in the amber bottles. Uh, keep the top on when when they're when you're not using them. You know, after you you apply it, you know, you put the the almond oil in the palm of your hand, and then you put in the the drops of essential oil, and then you apply that to wherever on your body. Do whatever. Then then go, make sure you go back and put the lid on your essential oil because it's volatile. Remember, it, it it readily jumps into the air, and that molecule then will just evaporate. That little orifice, that little plastic part that actually goes down into the essential oil, okay, into the bottle, that's called an orifice, and that allows the essential oil to drip out. Now, some oils are thicker than others, and we don't mix you know, a carrier oil in there so that they'll all have the same viscosity. Some are thick. Sandalwood is thick. Uh, lavender is thin. And we just, we, some will drip out faster than others because we let the essential oil stay the way it's naturally meant to be. But the, uh, that orifice, besides dripping out the oil, actually limits the amount of oxygen that can go into the bottle because that uh, oxygen, that UV, all that good stuff is you know, going to get into that bottle and start raising havoc as well. So you want to keep them covered. You want to keep them in the dark. You want to keep them uh, with the lids nice and tight and securely on there. And they'll last a long, long time. A friend of mine, oh, I, I'm 54, almost 55, and about you know, 15 years ago, um, having trouble with with menstrual cramps and stuff like that, I was using Woman Wise, which is the oil for that. And I uh, no longer needed it, balanced what I needed it to do, and after you know using it for a few months, I no longer needed it. Okay, so I put it in my little case and uh, went about my merry way and on and on. And, and then as I went through menopause and had hot flashes and stuff like that, I used the oil called Balance to figure that out. But anyway, long story short, I no longer needed Woman Wise, haven't used it in probably 15 years, okay, 12, 15 years. And my neighbor came up and she said her, her little 13-year-old daughter needed, uh, was having period cramps and, and she was doubled over and she didn't go to school that day and she was having a heck of a time, okay. The, uh, so I said, well, you know, all I've got is this, uh, you know, 13-year-old whatever bottle of of woman wise because that's the one that she needs but you're more than welcome to use it and then I'll bring another one home from work with me tomorrow that's fresh I mean you know 12 years you're looking at oh boy what, what's going to go on there you know and 
So I gave it to her. She came up and got it, whatever. I told her, you know, have her put it in the tub, rub it on her lower back, rub it, rub it on her lower um, tummy, and do what she needed to do with it. And I went to work the next day, brought home some woman wise from uh, from work and dropped it off at her house. And she says, oh, no, 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 I don't need it. This bottle that you gave me is working just great. She went to school this morning. You know, she slept great. I mean, after she took the bath and she rubbed some deeper on her back for some pain, she said it was great. There's not a problem. And so, you know, that's after 12 years. Now, you know, maybe she needed to use, you know, four drops instead of three or something like that. But that's amazing to me that, that the oils hold that uh, therapeutic property for that long. So keep them well stored. I have a case that I keep them in, and so I can find them when I need them, and they're, they're in the dark. You don't need to keep them refrigerated, but you don't want to store them, you know, out in your garage in the hot summertime either or in the cold winter time. Just room temperature, and, uh, and, and they'll last you a good long time. They're worth the investment for a long, long time, okay? All righty. All right, let's talk about carrier oils themselves for a second and why we want to use carrier oils in the first place. I have probably had every single oil, single and blend, on my skin straight at one time or another over the past eight or ten years. Some sting. <laughs> you know, straight cinnamon, straight nutmeg, kind of burny, straight lemon, actually, can get some skin irritation going. Uh, you don't need to use them full strength. You don't want essential oil use to be to cause any skin sensitivity or rashing or burning or anything like that. You want it to be pleasant. You, you're going to be more compliant with it if, if it makes you happy. They're very, very concentrated, like we said in the beginning. They're very concentrated. You only need, every time you use it, a couple of drops. Seriously, you know, three, four drops, that's all you need. More important than using ten drops this morning would be to do it throughout the day with three drops each time. That's more important, how often you use it and reapply it. Um, as a side note here, the liver is 24-7, you know, circulating, not circulating, but uh, filtering your blood. And you're using up these essential oils. They're going into the cells. They're pulling junk out of the cells. They're chelating with, you know, mercury and all sorts of bad stuff. And they're doing their job, and they're being used up. And that happens every four to six hours. So when people say, well, how often should I put it on? I say every four to six hours. Uh, if you want to keep the body, uh, you know, the blood levels, you know, high, you want, might want to do it every three or four hours initially, at least to get the balance occurring, and then back it down from there. But you, you don't need to use a lot of essential oil each time. And you want to apply this to the skin, and you want to cover, remember that, that slide that was in there about Hilton's Law of Physics. By applying to the skin, you can affect muscles and bones and joints and skin, all the stuff from the skin. Well, so you want to cover a pretty large area. You don't want to just have one little tiny minute area. You know, there's exceptions to that rule, obviously. But uh, but for the most part, you want to, you know, if your leg aches or your knee aches or your shoulder hurts, I mean, you want to cover the shoulder and down the arm and a little bit on the back and up the neck, and you want to cover all of that area. And you can't do that with two or three or even four drops of essential oil. So what we do is we use a carrier oil. When we say carrier oil, that just means it is a vegetable-based fixed oil. This is almond, it's coconut, it's jojoba, it's uh, rosehip, it is avocado, uh, apricot, grapeseed, any of those kinds of carrier oils that you might want to use to basically dilute the essential oil so that you can cover a wide area on your body. It doesn't affect, it, it actually does, I think, affect the usage of the essential oil. I think that it makes it better. I think it makes the absorption ha occur uh, more effectively. If you think about how concentrated the essential oils are and if they are going to be in 
uh, one area, all of that concentration going in, they're just going to be like one after the other, you know, a steady stream of them going in through the skin. But if you have it on a wide area of the skin, then they're going to have a whole bunch more going in all at one time from all of these different places. So I think that it makes it actually more effective faster to uh, have them going in over a wider surface area. And if you think about blended oils, remember we talked about a blended oil and it has many different layers to it, many different aspects to, um, to help it. It has a, what we call a base layer, which is the, the, uh, the oil that goes in that does a lot of the physical attributes that we're talking about. And then you have uh, some of the mid-range, what we call notes, uh, that have that affect you know some of the mid range things like like starting on the emotions and maybe some of the mental stuff and then you have some higher stuff yet that works on the higher emotions maybe some of the higher spiritual mental kinds of stuff you have this whole range of things in there from the bottom notes the middle notes and the, what we call the high notes and the high notes are the high frequency blossom oils that most oils have in them, even if it's just a little tiny drop of rose at the very end of the blend, you have that high frequency in there. You have that high frequency in that blend uh, carrying it. And if you've ever been, let's say, in San Antonio in the summertime, let's say August, okay, it's nice and hot, and you spilt your drink on the sidewalk, and it didn't even make the sidewalk wet. It just went right to it just evaporated right off the sidewalk. It was so hot. And that's called sublimation. And that's what happens when you, those essential oils that like cool, they like about 20, excuse me, about 67, 62 degrees essential oils, okay? They, they don't like to be horribly hot. And so when you, when they come out of the bottle from wherever you've been storing them in their nice little case, and you take them out, and you mix them up, and you put them on your skin, bam, your skin is hot compared to, to 62 or 67 or whatever. Your skin is warm, warmer, anyway. And that creates that evaporation, that it creates that sublimation for the essential oil to do. Now, of course, some of it's going to get in your skin, but some of it is going to sublimate. Well, I'm lazy, and I'm always in a hurry, and I want all of this to work, and I want it to work to my best advantage, and I want it to work right now and I want it to work right. And so essential oils, if you put the carrier oil in the palm of your hand first, and then you, then you put the, a couple drops of the essential oil in there, it kind of encapsulates. Think of it as, as putting little mud galoshes on the essential oils, and it kind of slops them, slow, slows them down, so now they're kind of in the mud, and they can't evaporate. They can't get into the air. They can't sublimate. They have to get sucked into the body and raise the frequency that way. And so the carrier oil sort of tricks, if you will, the essential oils for a little bit and actually causes the evaporation to slow down and the body, so the body can absorb more. So in that respect, I do think that carrier oils are actually uh, improve essential oil uh, use, okay? But you do not want to keep your carrier oil and your essential oils in the same bottle. You don't want them together because essential oil molecules are small, okay? And carrier oil molecules, the fixed oils, have big old vegetable proteins in there. And those vegetable protein molecules are like the schoolyard bully. They're big and they're mean and, and, and they beat up on everybody. They, they beat up on the little guys and you know, steal their lunch money or whatever and, and sort of render them ineffective or not as, as effective. Now, they don't do this doesn't slow down their process of absorption through the skin, but would they sit there for long times, you know, overnight, you know, days, weeks, months, then, then they render them uh, less effective. Now, of course, it doesn't happen immediately. I'm telling you the best case scenario is to just mix them as you go and, and put them in there, so that, but don't store them together. Don't think, okay, I'm going to use Sego Lily every day for, for um, 
in the morning when I clean my face. So I'm just going to mix my, you know, almond oil and my sago lily together, and then I don't have to do that, and I save that step. Don't do that. Just have one bottle of almond or coconut or whatever it is you use and, you know, 29 bottles of essential oil, okay? A lot of people buy carrier oil, you know, the almond or the coconut or whatever, because it's more economical if you buy it in a bigger bottle. And so certainly do that than just refrigerate the big bottle and then fill up the little bottle that you keep by the bed or in the, you know, by the sink or, or whatever and go that way. Uh, and we use almond and coconut for the most part. They have such a long shelf life, it's not even funny. Uh, the reason why the um, uh, coconut oil is liquid is because it's what we call fractionated. It doesn't mean that something's added to it chemically. It actually means that something has been taken away. It has the medium chain triglycerides spun, big, big centrifuge, and they spin the heavy parts out, and they, they, they kind of drop off, drop off the side. And that's the solid part of the uh, you know, natural occurring coconut uh, oil. <clears throat> Excuse me, it looks like Crisco at room temperature, and then you put it in the palm of your hand and it just melts. So uh, what we do to make uh, coconut oil liquid and stay liquid is to spin out some of those, those heavy molecules. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Now, moving right along, let's talk a little bit about safety. We talked about pregnancy earlier, but we'll talk a little bit more now. About There, there are some cases where you have to use some caution on what you're using on who, whom. Uh, for the most part, blanket statements that essential oils do not produce side effects is, is accurate. They're, they're not medications. They're, they're not like pharmaceuticals that you have to have the right prescription for the right person. You know, just about everybody can use lavender, you know, or, or any of the blended oils, with a few exceptions. And we're going to talk about pregnancy first, okay? Um, so I hope I don't offend anybody that might be pregnant because I can't see you, but what's wrong with pregnant people, <laughs> pregnant women? What's wrong with them? What's out of balance with them? If the whole object of natural medicine is to bring about balance to that scale, bring about that homeostasis, bring about that, that improvement in our health by maintaining that balance, what is out of balance already now with pregnant women? And that is their hormones. That is, they're out of whack. And they need to stay out of whack. They, they can't be brought into balance until after uh, the baby's born because the, that imbalance in the hormones is what's maintaining the pregnancy. And that's what triggers different aspects of the pregnancy is the different levels of the different hormones at the different times. And so you don't want to mess with anything that balances hormones while you are pregnant. There are a lot of cautions for pregnancy with the single oils. Uh, I have seen lots of problems with peppermint, just little old peppermint. I've seen problems with lots and lots of singles with, with pregnancy. But there's really only two blended oils of the synergistic blends that Butterfly Express makes. There's only two that have a, a real serious caution for use in pregnancy. And those would be the two that balance hormones. And I've mentioned them. The one called Woman Wise is the oil blend that works to help balance the period, balance the cycle, get the hormones going so you can get pregnant, work on clearing up the, the period cramps and the inappropriateness or whatever might be going on with the, uh, with the period, with, with the whole cycle. So chance and woman wise is actually the oil that you can use for a young woman who isn't uh, able to get pregnant. This is the one that you say, okay, use woman wise and do this and do this and you know it'll help stimulate the ovulation and da 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 da. Okay, and then they find out, oh, I'm pregnant. Well, they've probably been pregnant for at least two or three weeks while they're still using the woman wise. But now that they know that they're pregnant, okay, so we just stop using woman wise. That's the caution. It's not horrible, okay, but it's the caution. You don't want to balance inappropriately hormones during pregnancy. The other oil to avoid during pregnancy that balances hormones, the other, the other 
blended oil is the one called uh, Balance. And this is the one for hot flashes. So chances are if you're pregnant, you're not going to be having hot flashes and you wouldn't be using Balance. So this is something that if you're, you know, a practitioner or massage therapist or, you know, something like that, you'd want to be cautious and know what's going on there if you had clients or something that might be pregnant or, or you know, if you're pregnant that you wouldn't want to use during pregnancy. But for th other than that, those two exceptions, the blended oils are perfectly safe to use during pregnancy. Now, there is no exception, there is no uh, substitute, I guess is a better word, for common sense, okay? If it doesn't make sense, think about it before you do it, you know? Ten drops of oregano under the tongue, hmm, maybe that just doesn't make sense. Maybe I'll, you know, do something different or what have you. So there's no exception for common sense. Make sure you use good common sense. But I'm just pointing out to you that the the two oils that balance hormones. And read the single oils. Uh, if it's a high-risk pregnancy, you want to be extra, extra, extra cautious. But the essential oils can actually help boost the the fertility of the pregnancy, too. So I'm not saying don't use them. I'm saying use your use your mind, okay? I, I attended a class one time, and, and somebody asked the, the question, well, what? How, how soon can I use essential oils on my daughter? Uh, I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, well, you know, she's like 16 months old or something like that, and she was like waiting until she was a certain age before she could use essential oils on her because she had somehow thought that she couldn't use essential oils on an infant. And, oh, no, 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 no. Now, of course, you wouldn't want to slather uh, a two-year-old with, you know, 15 or 20 drops of deeper, hardly undiluted, on their back. That might be overkill. Again, use some common sense. I have used essential oils on an itty-bitty tiny baby. Um, Larie has a grandson that was born at 24 weeks gestation. He weighed, I think, one pound, eight ounce, something like that. He was just teeny, teeny, bitsy little guy. And so when he finally came home from the hospital, uh, you know, a few weeks after the due date and, and what have you, um, you know, compromised lungs, um, you know, trouble breathing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so we were using Breezy and Aspire on him and, and in the room with him and stuff like that to ease that, uh, that, that burden on his lungs. But what I did was I put some some almond oil in my hand, maybe instead of 10 or 12 drops for I would for an adult, maybe I used like you know, 15 or 20 drops, so a little bit more of the, of the fixed oil, the carrier oil. And then instead of three or four drops of essential oil, maybe I only put in like one drop of essential oil. And then rub my hands together so it's really dilute now, and instead of using my whole palm to slather his back, maybe I just use the amount that's on the first three or four fingers. And, and go from there, or hold my palm in front of his nose so he's breathing in aromatically what's left on my hand, all right? So, again, you want to scale down how much you give to children appropriately, but you don't have to not use it on them. Very, very important. Okay. Um, I lost something on my slide here. Medication. <clears throat> A lot of people say, well, they want to get off their blood pressure medicine or they want to get off their... Um, you know, pain pills, or they want to get off, you know, whatever, um, their, their antidepressants. And they're afraid that medications will interact inappropriately with the essential oils. And for the most part, I don't think that's true. I think that the pathways that medications work is different than the ways that the essential oil molecules work, and that they can be taken concurrently. And what you find happens is that you'll need less and less of medication. You'll forget to take a pill or you'll cut a pill in half or take it half as often, something like that. But you can't, uh, you know, necessarily go cold tur turkey off your medicine. And, you know, you might want to work with your doctor or whoever gave you the medicine to say, you know what, I'm, I'm doing this to cut back on my prescriptions and I'm doing this to balance, you know, what might be going on inappropriately. But what most people find that they use the two concurrently and then they find that, oh, Miraculously, they need less and less blood pressure medicine until they finally don't need any more or whatever. Okay, internal use. Let's talk about that for a, for a minute real quick. 
um, I am a dietitian, like I said in the beginning, and so I know a little bit about how the gut functions and how it works and how stuff is absorbed out of there and what have you, okay? There is a school of thought that says that internal use is, is preferred over topical application or aromatherapy. Um, essential oil molecules are small and they're delicate and they're put together very specifically and for that for a specific function. And the stomach acids, the, the stuff in the stomach is is heavy duty. I mean it it is a uh a nasty environment in your stomach. And so let's just pretend that you're going to use essential oils internally, capsulate them and take them you know, like a supplement. So you have to find a gelatin capsule to put them in. All gelatin capsules are not alike. I was at an arom uh, at a, the chiropractor's convention up here, natural paths up in Idaho one time, and there was a guy there from one of the pharma from one of the supplement companies showing the differences with how his was better and how quickly his little pills dissolved by just placing different gelatin capsules in water and watching, you know, how they did or didn't uh, dissolve. So you have to have a gelatin capsule. You have to put it in the gelatin capsule. You have to put the capsule together. Then you have to swallow the capsule, and then it has to get into your stomach. Okay. It's in this, you know, nasty, horrible, acidic environment, this cute little, cute little uh, molecule, and now it has, now you've dissolved. Let's just pretend that this time the uh, capsule dissolved. Not a lot of absorption happens in the stomach. It's going to happen through the intestinal tract. So the essential oil then has to make it out of the, the stomach intact. Okay, let's say that it did. Then it has to go along the digestive tract, the intestinal tract, and at different places, it's not just helter-skelter, but at different places, it is absorbed into the blood system. And then once it is in the blood system, it you know, binds with the oxygen and it gets the nutrition and it goes to the place where it does the most good. <coughs> Excuse me. All righty. How long does that take? you got to get the capsule, fill it up, swallow the pill, you know, have it dissolve, get it out, get it absorbed, get it going. It's going to take a while. Excuse me, just a minute. There we go. It's going to take more than five or ten minutes. I can guarantee you that. The essential oils, when topically applied to the skin, are instantly absorbed into the skin. They, they just absorb in readily through all those receptor sites on the skin. That's their job. That's what they do. They're small, and they readily get in there, and bam, they're immediately in that tissue now and into the blood system and circulating. And I don't know about you, but when I want to do something like that or if I've got pain or, or whatever, I want it to work. I want it to work fast. I want it to work now. And if I can access every part of my body through my blood system, through the outside of my skin, I don't have to put it through my gut. I don't have to eat it. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I've got a <clears throat> dry, swallowy spot here. Um, the um, I, I was at the aromatherapy convention in Denver a couple years ago, and I met a fellow named Robert Tisserand who has written a book compiling all the statistical information about that, that we know at the time when he wrote the book that we knew about essential oils. And part of that was about the kind of bad name that they had been receiving because of deaths from from people taking them internally. And through this information, they ascertained that, uh, you know, people had died from internal use of essential oils. Now, it was probably caustic oils and probably given in too large a proportion. But still, nonetheless, there's not ever been anybody that has died from topical application. And I have to go home tonight after teaching you guys and I have to sleep, and I sleep like I have good sleep. I'm blessed with good sleep, and I like to keep it that way. And if I ever at once thought that people were going to be out here eating oil and saying, well, Sharon said if I did this, then this would happen, and then something bad happened to you, I wouldn't be able to sleep well. So I, I, teach, I teach prudence. I teach common sense. I teach uh, for you to go slowly 
and be and be very uh, mindful about what you're doing. Just helter skelterly eating essential oils can create some problems. Now, do I know people that do it? Surely. Do I know people that in, use internal use um, butterfly express? You betcha. But they're doing it on their own, and they're doing it, and they're they're experienced, and they're not doing it just to see what's going to happen. They 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 know what they're doing, and they're using um, prudence as they do. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are saying recently that the reason that Butterfly Express does not uh, recommend internal use is because our oils are not pure, and that if our oils were pure, then we could eat them and everything would be good. <clears throat> Think about that statement for a minute. Uh, if I am topically applying something to my skin and it is absorbing in immediately, and going right into my blood system, and I have no way to short circuit it or or slow it down or or monitor it. It's just basically happening quickly. That's topical application. That oil needs to be pure and needs to stay pure because it is absorbed in so quickly. <clears throat> if I if I put it through my stomach, my stomach acid has a chance to break down. You know components if they're not quite good, and the intestinal tract has the ability to isolate some components if they're not quite good, and there's at least some, some stop measures along the way um, to help if the oil were, were not totally pure if I was ingesting it. So it's actually the opposite of what they're saying there, that internal use at least gives you a little bit of a chance to isolate some and, and uh, remove some of the the chemical components where it's topical application, it goes right into your system. It goes right into your blood system, bam, and you have no way to determine you know, or, or monitor it. So, again, do what you want to do. Do it wisely. Do it judiciously and, and be careful because all the negative publicity that essential oils have gotten has been from internal use. Okay. Oftentimes, when we are using an essential oil, <clears throat> they will cause discomfort. Mostly it's just a rash on the skin. So let's talk about for a few minutes what some of those things could be or what, what could cause them or, or you know, what makes that happen. Okay, from, from before when I was talking about uh, <clears throat> detoxifying the cells and, and the good water comes in and the bad water comes out and you clean and scrub that membrane, so here you are putting essential oils um, on the skin, okay? And you've never done it before. You're just brand new and you want to, you know, you're kind of excited and, and you know this is going to work and you're convinced and, and you're, you've had good success or you, you trust who's giving you this advice or what have you. So you're going to do it. And it's like, well, you know, if some is good, then, then more might be a little bit better. And, and so on it goes onto your skin. And, you know, maybe you use the carrier oil. Maybe you didn't use quite as much. Maybe you did it more than, you know, two or three times a day. You know, who knows what could have happened, okay? But all of that information, or excuse me, all of that uh, good cleansing stuff goes on in the cell, and it pulls that stuff out of the cell and into the blood system. And the, the blood system then is, like, circulating all of this stuff, and it's kind of toxic, and the body has to eliminate it because it can't have all that toxicity in the, in the blood. So what's it going to do? It's going to try to diffuse it any possible way it can, and the number one way that the body diffuses that toxicity within the blood is push it to the skin and get it to diffuse through the skin because the skin is actually our largest organ of elimination. You know, we think of elimination, we think of the colon, we think of the kidney, but we actually eliminate through the, uh, through the lungs. Every time you expire, every time you breathe out, you're actually uh, detoxifying your body somewhat and, and through, your, through your skin as well. Okay, so you're like, okay, so the body is diffusing this buildup of toxicity that's in the blood, and it's pushing it to, to the surface of the skin. So that might be one reason why we have a rash, okay? And then people will say they'll stop using the essential oil because it's like they're allergic to it. They have a rash. And so they stop using it. And lo and behold, the rash in a couple of days clears up. Well, then they were allergic to the oil, right? Well, probably not. I mean, I think a few people over the course of, you know, the, the time I've worked with this 
have been allergic to essential oils, but very, very rarely. Most often it is the body's detoxifying that creates that creates the, the this topical uh, effect. Okay. And so you want to go slowly when you first start out. You don't want to detoxify too quickly that will cause discomfort. So if you're brand new to the you know, to the whole thing, then don't start out doing it, you know, twenty you know, a whole bunch of times a day or start out with uh, a lot of oil on one day. Just go slowly. Again, use your mind. You know, if it makes sense, then it sounds good. Then let's let's you know pay attention to that. If you do get that toxicity, and not everybody gets this. Okay, I'm just talking in, in you know some cases. Okay, um, but if you do get that detox sort of thing happening, the itchy skin or a rash or kind of maybe sluggish or something, then there's a couple of things to do that can help with that, uh, diffuse that. One is unity. The oil unity is very helpful, as, and it describes this in your book. Um, and also soaking your feet in like a Redmond clay or Epsom salt and diffusing that toxicity and sort of coaxing it out through the pores of the feet or even just a nice warm, hot, soaky bath uh, will be helpful in, instead of um, uh, you know, soaking the whole body. You can just soak the feet. And that helps to detoxify uh, the body, okay? But other than that, um, you know, pretty much you're, you're, th those are the safety precautions, okay? Now, moving along here, <clears throat> we are, oh, yeah, see, when we're at two hours, we're doing great. Nobody has um, chatted me a message yet that I have seen or a question. So um, I have, um, you know, if you do, just, just, you know, type one in there for me. Okay, so topical application, or excuse me, methods of use. Let's talk about how we use these essential oils. Okay, how many different ways can we utilize them in the body? And there's bunches. Uh, there's bunches of ways to use essential oils, certainly. Uh, there's, there's probably 15 or 20 of us listening to this, uh, of, of you out there listening to this uh, lecture right now. And we could, if we were in public or, or if we were all online at one time, we could probably come up with about 30 or 40 different ways to use the essential oils. There's not just one one way for one person. I mean, there's lots and lots of different ways to do this. Okay. But I kind of divide them into four different areas just in my mind to kind of how I break them down. Okay, topical application. And, you know, I've been talking about this throughout the course of the last two hours, putting them on your skin topically. But you can mix them like we've been talking about with the carrier oil, but you can also mix them with, say, shampoo. Maybe you're trying to affect the scalp and the hair health, all right? So you might want to put them in your, with your shampoo or your, or your conditioner and use that as the method to topically apply them and leave them, uh, uh, you know, transferred into the hair. Uh, I have pretty long hair, and maybe like once, once a year I'll take a bunch of solid coconut oil and mix in with it the hair, um, the, the delicate essential oil blend, and I'll take about a, you know, half a cup of coconut oil and, you know, maybe, you know, seven or eight drops of the, carry, or the essential oil, and I'll just mash that all into my skin, and then, or not my skin, sorry, my hair, and then I'll leave that there for maybe a half an hour. And then I'll just then go in the shower, take a, sh you know, and shampoo my hair and stuff, and it just leaves it conditioned and and kind of, you know, spring cleaned or whatever. So that's another way to topically apply. You don't have to just topically apply with a carrier oil. Uh, one of the techniques I want you to understand in topical application is a term called what we call layering, and layering is when you can put more than one oil on the body on the same spot at the same time and why that would be effective. There's, there's oils that do lots of things, certainly. There's oils that work for aligning things. That's millennia. It puts things back where they belong. That's a, uh, a good oil when you've fallen or, you know, fallen off a bike or, or, you know, hurt yourself some way. Something is probably not where it was when you started out. That's why you're bruising, swelling, what have you. 
So millennia is always good. So you want to say you fall off your, your bike. You want to put that on your knee. But it also hurts or it's also swelling. So he's like, okay, well, I want to use deeper because that's for pain. And so then you take some, some uh, almond oil and you apply the, the millennia, excuse me, right over where you put the millennia, you put the deeper, right over where you, where you just put it. But then let's say it extra special hurts or you want to, you know, target some tendons or something like that. So then you use warm down and you put warm down right over the same spot. And maybe by this time there is enough coconut or almond oil on it that you don't need more of that. You just need to put a couple drops of the warm down or tend to care or patches or whatever on there and rub that in. So now you've applied those three oils on the same spot <clears throat> at the same time for a layered effect to, for, to heal that whole area. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I don't want you to do is mix them all together. Say, okay, put the coconut oil or the almond oil in the palm of your hand, and then say, okay, shake in a little bit of millennia, shake in a little bit of deeper, and shake in a little bit of warm down. That's what I don't want you to do. No, no, no. What I want you to do is one, and then the second one, and then the third one, one right after the other. Now, you don't have to wash your hands in between. You don't have to count to 30. You don't have to you know, do anything special. You just need to, to put one on at a time. That synergistic blend has its um, own frequency. It has its own uh, sort of imprint that it gives to you. And you want to keep that separate. You don't want to mix the synergistic blends together because they kind of interact with each other, you know, not so well. You want to keep them separate but they absorb in so quickly that you can put on one right after the, right after the other. You don't have to wait, uh, you know, f five minutes or ten minutes or two seconds or whatever. Just do one, then the other, then the other. I fell off my deck one time and really, really cracked my knee. I heard it bad. Oh, it was bad. And so I was putting something on that knee every half hour. I, you know, put on deeper, and then I'd put on birch, and then I'd put on heliochrism, and then I'd put on more deeper, and then pain, and then millennia, and every, you know, every little bit I was putting on something different. So maybe not all at the same time, but over the course of four or five uh, hours, I had put on maybe ten different oils, and man, it didn't swell, backed right down. Uh, you know, I was as good as gold the next day, but I was pretty, pretty studious to it that first couple of hours. Somebody has sent me a question that says, are butterfly expressions uh, or express uh, oils organic, pesticide-free, wild-harvested, or cultivated? Uh, yes, no, yes, and yes. <laughs> they are pesticide-free, yes. They are, some are organic. Actually, a large percentage of the oils that we uh, import are organic. They are, some are wild-crafted and some are cultivated. Um, no, no. Um, no pesticides. The thing with organic labeling, and I'm going to put on my master gardener hat this time, the labeling laws for organic from country to country, from state to state, I mean, it's like, are different. And so what, what China might mean by organic standards and what Portugal might mean by organic standards and what Madagascar uh organic standards are all different. And the standards are, in my opinion, horrendous of what you can actually use and maintain an organic um, standard or, or, or status in some of those countries. They use, they're, you're able to use chemicals that, that I wouldn't use on, on, my, on my farm. And, but they're still able to meet a standard and be classified as organic. So just because you see something that says organic, don't let that fool you into thinking that that is the most perfect oil that's out there because there are some conventionally grown oils that are probably better frequency that are... Than, than some of the organics that I have encountered. Um, so just because an oil or a product says organic doesn't mean 
hands down, that it is going to be better. So those standards are are not uh, worldwide. They're individual for, for the countries. You want to hope that it means that they have used, uh, you know, less chemicals and stabilizers and, and pesticides and herbicides and, and Roundup and all sorts of stuff on them, but not necessarily. Uh, what you want to do, what you want is a finished product, an oil, an essential oil that will produce results. I believe that essential oil molecules, the essential oils themselves are alive. They're living. They're, they're products of plants. They are, they are alive. And because of that, they produce and, and partake and impart, rather, that frequency on us when we use them, and that is how they will then predictably work. If, if they were not alive or if they were laced with chemicals or if they had um, all sorts of preservatives and stabilizers and all that stuff in them, they would not produce the health benefits because they would not be pure and they wouldn't be able to produce that health benefit. They wouldn't be able to balance the body and and bring about that true healing. And so I let the essential oils themselves um, work and, and do that job irregardless of whether it says cultivated or or wildcrafted or, or organic. So I hope that answers your question. Um, <clears throat> okay, topical application. So we talked about layering, putting you know lots on one place. My son came home from college one time, <clears throat> and he for some reason went into my bathroom, and around my sink and the tub and you know where have you, um, maybe had you know seven or eight you know ten different oils. It's like he came out of the bathroom with this very concerned look on his face and said, "Are you sick?" I'm like, "No, why?" <laughs> and he says, "Well, there's all these oils by the." By, you know, around the sink in the bathroom. Well, there's deliverance oil because I brushed my teeth with it, and maybe there is sago lily because I put that on my face in the morning, and there's lime because I use that to clean my face at night, and myrrh for the wrinkles at night, and, you know, whatever. You get lots and lots of oil. Sandalwood just because it smells good. I love it. Um, so there's lots and lots of oils that you can use in a day's time in different ways uh, at different times, uh, not necessarily layered on the sun plate. You could put, you know, birch on and and pain and and what have you on your knee, and you could put heart song on your chest, and you could put sago lily on your face, and you could brush your teeth with deliverance, and and bam, you're using a lot of different oils uh, all at the same time. Okay. Uh, topically, we want to look at uh, using, you know, anything that we use on the skin. You can take a good lotion and use lotion. Uh, as the carrier on the skin, or coconut oil, solid coconut oil is an excellent oil carrier for uh, essential oil. I love it. It's very emollient. It's uh, very soothing to the skin. It, it's, it's a very wonderful way to, to use essential oils. Um, there is uh, a, anything else that you could think of that would you know, topically allow you to use essential oils on the skin. Skin. Um, using the feet is a great way rather than, than the whole body. Okay, so like say you're trying to affect, um, you know, a, a balance of something, you know, high sesquiterpene count, and you don't want the smell of sandalwood because you're going to a meeting, and so you don't want to rub it on your neck, which is up close to your central nervous system, your brain, your spinal cord, or whatever. Use your feet. Uh, if you don't want to go, you have kids using essential oils and they don't want to go to school smelling like whatever the essential oil is, put it on their feet. Feet are a great place with large pores that the essential oils uh, absorb into very, very quickly. A good place to use oils is the feet. A lot of people, I know a couple of acupuncturists that use the oils topically when they on their needles that they, they find the acupuncture points. Or even if you do acupressure, I certainly do it when I'm doing a, a cranial, you know, sacral session. Is uh, is is using the essential oils. Um, you can use the ears, um, you know, like the if foot zones. A lot of foot zonists use essential oils on the feet as they're zoning the feet. But you, there's a whole oracle, you know, on the ear uh, sort of uh, location of all the different stuff that's on the ear. 
So there's lots of different ways that you can use the skin, you can use the body, you can use the meridian lines, you can use the chakras, and all of this is in your book. You can use all of those different ways, certainly, to manipulate essential oils onto the skin so that they can be absorbed in. Uh, and lastly, but not leastly, obviously, uh, massage. A lot of massage therapists use essential oils. And they're, you know, manipulating, you know, the skin uh, very effectively. Okay? So lots of different ways. Don't be uh, just um, thinking that it's, you know, one place, one, one oil or anything like that. Okay. Now, olfactory. That means smell. That means basically aromatherapy, using our sense of smell to utilize the essential oils for ourselves in a therapeutic way. That's what olfactory means. Um, so any way that gets the essential oils into the air, any way that gets them to evaporate so that they are circular, circulating around in the air that we breathe, um, and then we breathe it, and it goes into the lungs and down or excuse me, in through the nose or the mouth, down into the lungs, and then through the lungs, then it jumps into the blood system along with the oxygen. Bam, and it, it's right there. It's very effective. Okay? The number one way to do this is with a diffuser, any kind of a diffuser. It doesn't be a, you have to be a $200 diffuser. Uh, it can be you know, a $10 one that you get at Walmart. Um, <clears throat> Butterfly Express just a couple months ago started selling some, a little warmer, a little night light, sort of a warmer thing that has a dish on the top of it. And you put, you know, a couple uh, tablespoons of water, not oil, water in the top of that. And then put a couple, three drops of essential oil on there. And it's got a pretty low wattage light bulb. And, and there you go. Yes, the heat is going to dis, um, destroy the oil quicker. But, you know, as the water uh, evaporates with the essential oil, you, you know, in a couple, three hours, you might have to add a couple more drops. But a very effective, very inexpensive way to diffuse oil. Probably the cheapest diffuser around is a cotton ball, <laughs> okay? Just, you know, put some essential oil on a cotton ball and stick the cotton ball in front of a vent or a fan in your car, you know, into your fans, of your vents of your car. Your fur I know a guy that puts it on his, his uh, you know, furnace, filter or his air conditioning filter, he just at physically goes down and pulls it out of the thing and, you know, puts it on that filter, and then when the air conditioner or the, the heater is on, then that is circulating and vacuuming, scrubbing, and helping clean the air as well as, as, as you know, the equipment. Uh, so anything that gets it into the air is diffusing. Uh, sniffing the oil, just opening the bottle of oil and smelling it, just putting the bottle up to your nose and smelling it, that is therapeutic because because you're smelling it means that those molecules are present and then they're present and then they're going into your lungs and from your lungs they're going into your into your bloodstream. From your bloodstream they're going to all the different cells that need them to make them work. Uh, so just sniffing the bottle. Uh, Butterfly Express sells those inhaler packs so that you can saturate this little cotton core and then keep it in your pocket, unscrew it, and then you can inhale... Uh, whatever is whatever uh, oil is in the inhaler, and put that you know right in your pocket. This is great to carry onto a plane uh, because it's not liquid; it doesn't have to be declared. It's great for kids sending them to school. You don't want to send them your whole bottle so that they'll lose it or break it, or you know they can't have certain amounts of substance, substances with them. And it's, so, so those inhalers are excellent. But just opening the bottle, breathing it a couple of times, and then closing the bottle is very very effective. Uh, you can make your own room spray. Uh, get You need to get a glass bottle, not a plastic bottle, because essential oils sometimes corrode plastic, and so you want to be careful there. And so you want to uh, utilize uh, a, a small glass bottle and mix the essential oil with <coughs> some kind of a medium. I usually use distilled water. <coughs> And, you know, just spritz the room with that, you know, my, the room that my cat box is in or whatever. Excuse me. Um, again, if it's in the air, it's going to help <coughs> kill, you know, viruses and germs or what have you. If somebody has been in my office at work and, you know, they've been sick or had their sick kids in there while they got oils for them, then 
after they leave, not while they're there, but after they leave, I take out my deliverance spray bottle and just kind of spray the air, just spray down my office, kill all those viruses and germs that might be in the air right away. So a great way to uh, use essential oils, okay? Um, now water. <clears throat> I hope everybody has had a bath with essential oils at one time or another. It is wonderful. I don't take a bath that I don't add an essential oil to it. Some of them, if I've been out in the garden too long, like this earlier this week, I had been cleaning out. I have a koi pond in my Zen garden, and I had been cleaning that out, and uh, so I was tired. You know, I didn't hurt anything. I didn't pull a muscle or strain or sprain or anything, but I was tired. <laughs> I was very tired that night. So I got into the the tub, and I put some deeper in there with me, and it just, you know, made everything relax. And, you know, slept great and was fine the next morning. I wasn't, you know, tired or stiff or, or anything like that the next day. So there's always something that you can put in the tub. If you're not sick and you're not tired and your muscles don't ache, then just put in something that makes you feel good. Tranquility is a great one in the tub. Sanctuary, solitude. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't put peppermint, but some people tell me they like peppermint in the tub. Uh, but it, w water is a great way in the bathtub to use essential oils to soak. How much do you need? A lot of people think that you might need more because that's a heck of a lot of water in the bathtub, but no, you don't. It sort of works homeopathically. It sort of works on the, the principle of being very dilute. It absorbs in very effectively. And so, you, you know, you don't need that much more just because you're sitting in all of that water. And just add the oil once you're in the tub. I just kind of put the bottle by the tub, get in the tub, and then you know, with the water and everything, then put in my, my, you know, three, four, maybe five or six drops, whatever, and then, you know, make sure you splash it all around, and it will skim on the top. You will see it. It will float. You can see the oil, and then you just splash it on and, and um, then enjoy, you know, soaking in the rest of it. So uh, if you don't take a bath, if you only shower, then you can use, utilize the same principle in the shower. Is just put a drain to catch the water, in the shower while you're showering, and then as you, so you're standing in that collected water, just put a couple of drops down there, and it's absorbing in through your feet, and, and you're good to go that way as well. Um, again, we talked earlier about just soaking the feet. Excellent way um, to use essential oils. If people have toe fungus or athlete's foot, some of that kind of stuff, and they want to use oils to help combat it, um, uh, Using water is probably better than just dumping it on straight or even using some kind of a carrier oil. The water disperses it into, up and under the toenails and in between the toes and, and around the nail bed, and it's just much more effective that way than utilizing um, just the oil on the feet. So, so soaking and water is good, 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 good way to do it. And again, uh, some people that have skin rashes, you know, eczema, or um, uh, psoriasis, you know, things that hurt the skin if you manipulate them. If you take the essential oil that you want to apply to them and put that in a spray bottle with a little bit of distilled water or the uh, Miracle 2 neutralizer product and spray that on that eczema or spray that on the... Um, psoriasis, that's better, that with the super, super dry skin, it's better than manipulating it, because sometimes that manipulation actually causes it to bleed and, and be more sore if you touch it. So sometimes just spraying it on with water uh, is a very effective way to deal with that, and kids much more appreciate that than, than being having you exacerbate it by rubbing it. Um, and then that way, if you have that in the water, mix up what you're going to use in a day, and every time you know, child walks by you, you know, spray them down with whatever it is, the lavender or the, or the baby me or whatever it might be that you're going to spray on them that will help. So wa water in a spray bottle is good for topical stuff occasionally too. <coughs> Excuse me, dry today. And so then that brings us to miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is anything else. <laughs> okay, it's, there's Billions of ways to use oils, and miscellaneous can be any other way that you can possibly think of. Um, I do gargle with essential oils. I do brush my teeth with them um, every day. 
uh, I, some people soak just toothbrushes in essential oils to, you know, kill the germs and bacteria that, you know, if you've got the flu going around in your house and people are still brushing their teeth with their toothbrush, but then it's a viral germ and that virus can live outside the body for, you know, what do they say, seven to ten days, and so you're getting better and then you brush your teeth with the uh, toothbrush that has the virus on it, you know, it's kind of a self-defeating circle there. And so sometimes people will soak toothbrushes in uh, different antibacterial or antiviral oils, you know, on a weekly basis or something like that to, to keep them fresh rather than just, you know, throwing the toothbrush away. Um, when I say I brush my teeth with oils, uh, I use a little teeny tiny tiny bit of toothpaste in a drop of essential oil, and, and that's what, how I brush my teeth. But deliverance oil is an acquired taste, and I do it because I'm lazy and don't want to just swish my mouth with it like a mouthwash, so I just do it all in one fell swoop. But a lot of people you know, are not going to do that. Uh, deliverance has a twin sister called spicy, which is more, has more cinnamon, so it's kind of a better taste for the mouth if you want to brush your teeth with it that way. Or just rub it on the bottom of your feet. You know, deliverance is not something that has to be used orally. Uh, other ways that germs spread in the house, uh, you know, through washing of dishes, wiping hands, through the laundry, you know, if somebody's been sick and you want to wash their bedding, you know, throw a couple of drops of, you know, sunburst or deliverance or something in there that will help kill those germs and bacteria on the bedding too and freshen the dishwasher or the washing machine as you do it. A very good way to um, <clears throat> to clean out, you know, all the inner places that just the water gets to your dishwasher or your washing machine or even just your sink. A lot of people actually can cook or do cook with essential oils. I've done it a little, uh, but um, they're very, 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 very concentrated, and so you have to make sure that you don't add too much or you'll have to dilute it. I was making uh, some salsa one time, and I didn't have a – okay, I – I, know, I mentioned this in the beginning, I have this herb farm, right? And so we were having this organic uh, or this, um, uh, you know, harvest party at the end of the year. You know, harvest, everybody come together and it had to be something that you grew and be local and all this kind of fun stuff. And so I'm making salsa, right? And so I go out to the herb garden and um, looking for some cilantro to chop up and put in there. And I didn't have any. It had all bolted. It had all gone to, to um, coriander, which is the seed, when cilantro goes to seed. And I'm like, well, I can crush some of those seed pods, and it will taste pretty good. It tastes very similar to cilantro, but it doesn't give it a lot of the same color. And parsley, it was still growing, you know, it's not really the same thing. So I'm like, what do I do? So I thought, huh, I can add a little bit of coriander or cilantro, essential oil. And but I had remembered what Larie had told me about uh, making some orange frosting one time, and it was very, she wound up with enough frosting for like six cakes because she had added too many drops of orange to the cake frosting. So I put a drop in my hand, and then I like dropped that drop into the, the um, you know, maybe five or six cups of salsa and stirred it around, and oh, it was wonderful. Um, so it gives a great flavor, but you don't want to just start shaking essential oils in and get five or six or oils, uh, drops of oil, because I'd have had to have made another gallon of salsa. So you, you want to be careful, but they are fun to cook with because they are so concentrated. I have a friend in Canada that makes a mold, you know, in the winter time or in the fall time, you make with the apple cider and the cinnamon and the nutmeg and, you know, all those wonderful, fun flavors that make the hot, the hot drink. And she uses some essential oils to sort of spice that up with, too. But again, go slowly uh, so you don't have to make, you know, five gallons of this.